Good morning, everybody. I'm Nick from Defiant Life, and this is our regular Monday morning live session. This is the last session that we are using to walk through the Define My Day process. So if you missed any of the previous weeks, go back and check them out. You can find them in the feed here. They're also on YouTube, and you can download them on the Defining Life with Nick Boris podcast that you can find on basically all the major podcast platforms. So uh, what is today? Today we're talking about review, we're talking about reviewing our progress, reviewing our feelings, um, you know, all the things that go into uh, what we do in Define My Day. We have to find a way to mark our progress, right? I'm giving away some of the goals of review, but we'll get to that in a little moment. I'm going to get us started off. We have probably a lot of new people watching today's session, getting their Define My Day uh, planners delivered in the mail this week, maybe next week, depending on how fast or slow the postal system is still working. Uh, so, uh, you know, for, if you're a veteran, if you've been with us every week for a long time, please welcome the new people. If you're new, welcome. I'll try to not bore you. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I think I think we do a decent job. We're getting better every week. Look, I'm making progress here the same way you guys are making progress in whatever you're doing. So I appreciate uh, appreciate you joining me. Uh, let's see where we are. First of all, let me before I get into the comments. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, 2021. And if you saw one of the posts I made on my Facebook page, uh, 2021, uh, the fact like 2021, like 2021, as in like it won, it beat us. That that's like the I saw that meme last week and I thought, oh my goodness, isn't that the truth? But hopefully, you know, uh, 2021 has more positive for us than 2020 did. Although, you know, looking back on it, uh, a lot happened. A lot happened. A lot of good stuff happened. Um, there's a lot of bad. There's a lot of things that we're contending with. But you know, I think uh, I think it's a matter of perspective. I think it's a matter of how we we look at our lives. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes we, uh, grow from, uh, from adversity and that's, that's certainly what I'm trying to do. And I'm hoping you're do the, doing the same thing. Um, let me get into the comments here with you guys. Anna, good morning. Anna, I loved what you had to say in the user group over the weekend. If you are not in the user group, I recommend you get into it because there are some very wise users in there. Uh, Janice, good morning. Good to see you. Debbie, good morning and happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Absolutely. Good morning. Great hat. Thank you. I wore this for a purpose. Actually, two purposes. Uh, number one, I was cutting lettuce for a salad last night, and I did my best to almost cut my finger off, <laughs> or my the tip of my finger. Um, so I can't, like, really do my hair. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I have a hat that fits uh, this session, um, and really every day, especially with the new people. You know, the new people are going to get into this process and they're going to say, uh, you know, this is hard. This, this, you know, this doesn't work for me. Um, we need to do hard things. And if you are unhappy with where you are currently, no matter how successful you are, uh, if you're not really happy with where you are, if you feel that you can grow, it only comes from doing the hard work. So, just do it. <laughs> I mean, that's, just, that's my answer for a lot of people. They're like, I don't like doing this. I don't like that. Sometimes you just have to do it. Sometimes you just have to do it. Life comes at you. And there are times we don't want to do things and we just have to do it. And I have things on my plate that like are screaming at me right now because I didn't just do them. And uh, I need to take care of it before it turns into something bigger. And then we just have to do it. I put it off long enough. It needs to be done. Um, you know, life is hard. Life is stressful. If you were with us earlier in the year, we talked about the stress of the lobster and how it grows out of its shell. And I'll tell you, I'm even, we're even experiencing it right now in this little desktop aquarium we have. For a lot of you that have been following along with me, we, I, I put a little saltwater aquarium as like a hospital tank for an anemone that wasn't doing well. And we have some clownfish and one of the clownfish just suddenly died a couple of weeks ago. So we put a new one in. And the new one has been getting beat up by the old one. And so, um, you know, it, it's it, I've been worried about it. So we, a couple of days ago, put in a little cage for the old, for the old one to, like, keep him away from the new one to let the new one get acclimated. 
but I was also letting the new one get kind of, you know, harassed, you know, hoping that eventually he would start, or she, he or she, I don't know which one it is, uh, would start, you know, defending itself. And so my boy and I were just talking about an assignment he has to do for work. And again, he has to be creative. He has to write a story about how to, how he got trapped in a snow globe and got out of it. He has to write a, like a, a, a story and he can't do that. He says, I don't have that kind of imagination. And I said, well, that's, this is practice for that. You know, somebody that's not good at math, they practice math. You need to practice this. And like, as we're having this conversation, I look in and the new clownfish is in the anemone, like swimming around, protecting itself from the old clownfish that never went into the anemone. So I, t I was basically like, that was, that's like the, like the lesson in all of this is the new clownfish got a little bit beat up and had frayed fins and was like defending itself, trying to, but really not just getting beat up, chased around the tank. And because I allowed him to go through that process without going too far, right? I gave him a break. I put the other one in a cage for a little while to hold it back, you know, but so I never let it get too bad that it was damaging, but because I allowed him to go through the process of acclimating himself and growing, and now he's living in the safest place and the other one can't get to him because the other one is not in the anemone. And so I'm watching them right now. And the one is trying to get like, get to him and he's not because the other one's just rolling around inside the protective tentacles of the anemone. It's crazy. It's just that it's naturally like stress is good for us. Like hard times teach us things. So don't be afraid of it. Don't run away from it. That all started with my hat. I have a comment about my hat. Sorry about that. But yeah, so I, I no no good meal go, goes unpunished. I was trying to make a salad for us for this week last night. And I, I, I took the Band-Aid off. It, it was bleeding a lot. I took the Band-Aid off this morning. And uh, I, I took like part of my fingernail off too. <sighs> Don't trust me with sharp object, objects. Where was I? All right, Brenda, good morning. Bonnie, good morning. Anna. Happy birthday. Yep. Uh, Amy, good morning. Carrie, good to see you. Good morning. Excited to finally be able to catch a live session. I know, right? Back to school tomorrow. Hope all is well with everyone. Yeah, same to you. Yeah, we went back to school today. The boys had a rough time getting up in the morning. Uh, good morning. Need to order more uh, more books. Terry, we're happy to <laughs> have you order more books. Thank you. Um, uh, Janice is not able to be here every week, but welcome to the newbies. Uh, Jean, good morning. Welcome to new people. It's good to see you here. Uh, absolutely, Anna. Thank you. I appreciate your contribution. Good morning. Happy birthday. Morning all, says Kelly. Uh, Joanna says, great day. Absolutely, Sharon. Good morning. And uh, Jean found Shakti Gawain for meditation. It is awesome to help me with meditation. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm in the Headspace app myself. I like that guy. And I just saw this morning that they have a Headspace meditation on Netflix. So if you have Netflix, Netflix, uh, you can access uh, uh, Headspace on Netflix now. I think that's pretty cool. Might have my kids try that. Uh, Sophie, hi, and Happy New Year. Absolutely, Happy New Year. Um, and, you know, so for the people that are new to these sessions, you know, we talk about a lot here. Right now we're talking about Define My Day, but a lot of times we'll talk about, you know, personal boundaries. We'll talk about performance. We'll talk about healthy habits. Uh, there's a new topic every week. And, you know, even if we go over the same topic one week uh, and we went over it a couple of months ago, there's always something new going on with it, depending on what we found with somebody in the user group or if uh, I read something new, a new article, a new book. So there's always... There's always new stuff coming up, which is why we're here every week. Um, and uh, D says for meditation, Tata Brock. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So uh, what are we going to talk about today? Number one. Well, we're going to talk about review in a little bit. But I want to go into a couple of things, especially for the new people. Uh, the 2021 mindset I want you to have is this. Small steps can lead to big results. It's in the beginning of every Define My Day, every Define My Day book. Small steps, big results. It is everything to have that mindset. Because normally, this time of year, the 1st of January, 
you know, for a lot of people, the 4th of January, because this is Monday, we try to radically change our lives. And by the third week of January, some of us make it a little bit longer, uh, we're exhausted. It's not who we are. And we maybe take on things that aren't authentic to what we want. We do it out of obligation. We do it because it's what we think we should do, what we're told we should do. Uh, but the bottom line is this. You don't get up and run a marathon straight from the couch. And that's what we try to do every stinking January. And I don't think that's okay. We need to take the time to develop a plan, to develop small steps, to point out small steps, plan small steps forward, and then each day look back and say, that was good, or mm, I don't want to do that again. But we need to consistently take steps forward. And Define My Day is designed to help you take small steps to realign yourself with your path that you want to go on. And sometimes you decide that path is wrong and you need to take a different path. That's okay. But the goal is to keep moving forward and not sort of like flail around and, and roll around, right? Just kind of go in a bunch of different directions and never make progress and never understand why we're not making progress. The point of Define My Day is to help you clarify, lift the fog, clarify the direction that you want to go in life, and then help you make those small steps forward and not wear yourself out. One of the best ways I've found to explain that mindset of not wearing yourself out is this analogy like the river of well-being. If you view well-being as this river and you're on a boat or a raft floating downstream, in the middle are these calm waters and they're just carrying you forward. On one side is the bank of rigidity. It's a cold, dead place with a lot of like roots and things just to, to grab you and hold you there. And you don't grow there. You just kind of like, everything's in perfect order. Uh, there's no fun to be had. It's just like this cold, dead place. And if you stay there too long, you just kind of wither, right? You just kind of like stagnate. On the opposite bank is the bank of chaos. And over there, there's like swirly waters and there's upheaval and you can get tossed from your boat, you know, maybe even drown, right? A lot of bad things happen in the bank of chaos too. As people, it's our responsibility to identify when we're getting too close to either bank and gently guide ourselves back to the center of the river of well-being. So we don't want to get tangled up in those roots and stuck in that cold, dead, rigid life where everything is planned out and we got to be here and got to be here and got to do this and got to do this. And the next thing you know, we look up and life is over. And we don't want to get too stuck in chaos too, where we, everything is just like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to see what happens today or, or cause drama or let other people cause drama. Like there's no boundaries and there's just like a bunch of chaos happening, right? You can think of people, you know, that that are way too far into either one of those two banks. And so when we talk about balance, we don't talk about, you know, being perfectly balanced all the time we will go back and forth between getting too close to one bank or the other. But we have to keep being aware, trying to be aware, grow our awareness of where we are in the moment and steer ourselves back towards the center of that bank. And so with Define My Day, I don't want you to get to the point that it's a chore. Don't be so rigid with Define My Day that you know, you're just, I have to do this. I have to do this. I got to do this. That's not the point of Define My Day. But it is designed to help you avoid the chaos too. Right? There's, we're trying to steer you toward that well-being in the middle. We're not trying to make life too rigid. But we're also saying it's not okay to just freewheel it and see what happens because you're just not going to end up in the place that you want to end up. And that brings me to my second point, the journey. If you are planning a trip in life, say you're in New York and you want to drive to Florida or you want to travel to Florida, right? You can get there by walking, by driving, by taking a plane. But 
one, you have to state the desire to go, right? You have to have the, the idea that you want to go there. And then you kind of have to know the general direction you want to go, right? And so the desire is like your, your vision for life. It's, 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 you know, if we go back to, um, uh, where's that, where's that one? Right here, right? Where I, the previous week I talked about um, the vision, the direction we want to go, right? It's kind of our, our, our long-term goals, and we're bringing them forward with our monthly goals. So, you know, we have to know that we want to go there. But then we have to know the general direction that we want to go, right? Like if you're in New York and you want to go to Florida, you have to start walking south or you have to start driving south. And that's what we're doing is we figure out what we want out of life. Because, look, if I walk out my front door and just start walking, chances are I'm not going to make it to Florida. I, I'm going to end up somewhere and maybe it'll be a good place, but it might not be the place I want to go. So I kind of have to designate like or or find the 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 correct direction to move. And maybe nobody's been there before, but maybe I know that there's a general direction I have to go, right? Now, there is a best path to get to Florida. Whether you're walking, driving or taking a plane. Like there is a best path. And so ideally, I would follow that path. I would say, you know, I need to pull out of my driveway, turn right, uh, then make another right, and then make a left, and then get on to, you know, this highway and drive for a certain amount of miles. Oh, by the way, I also need to prepare. All right, so I can get on that road, but do I have gas? Do I have food? Am I going to have to stop for anything? You know, how is my car in good shape? So the same thought that we put into taking that journey, we need to take that, like, our life is a journey. And so when we go back to we go back to this scene uh, from from the other week. Oh, no, 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 I'm giving you guys the. All right, when we look here over my right shoulder in this photo here, right, is that circle, which is our life. And there is a direction that is best for us. We have to identify that for ourselves. But if we just start moving in every direction based on whatever happens today, we're not going to end up where we want to go. So we have to set out a course for ourselves and do the things on a daily basis that move us down the path toward where we want to be in life. Otherwise, you know, if we're sick of our situation, if we're overworked, if we're underpaid, if we're unappreciated, if we're just not happy with where we are going in life, if we're not paying attention to the steps we're taking, we're just trying to like take care of stuff then we're not going to end up where we want to be. So that's why we do this whole Define My Day process. That's why every day we set our intentions. And you're going to find, you're going to make mistakes, right? You're going to, you're going to make something a priority and you're going to look back on it and go, mm, man, that wasn't really a priority. That shouldn't have been a priority. I felt like I wasted my time. That was a huge waste of time. That happens. And the review process helps us identify those things so that we can make better decisions moving forward. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to waste our time as long as we don't keep doing it. You know, we have to learn from our mistakes. We have to learn from our wasted time. Because if you identify, well, uh, hopefully you identify that you wasted time and then make the correction. If you don't, you're just going to drive yourself nuts. You're, you're, you're basically choosing to be unhappy with your path, with who you are or where you're going. And I don't want that for you. I want you to make good decisions based on being aware of where you're going in life and the things that you have done. All right, before we get into the pages here, I'm going to get into the comments real quick and make sure I didn't uh, miss anything. Janice, um, you grabbed a deal for the DMDs for a year at a great price. Finally get back, back to using them after starting off a new year. Janice. Thank you, first of all. Second, uh, getting back to using them. That means you stopped using them. Don't do that. Look, everybody, nobody's going to do this perfect. There are people, like everybody, not, not there are people, but everybody here is going to start the process and they're going to go up and down with it. Kind of the way we do with exercise and anything else in life, right? We, 
we get motivation, you know, when, when we start losing motivation, which usually happens week three, week four, um, you know, we start letting things like the wheels fall off a little bit. That gives us perspective. Stopping gives us perspective, but you don't want to continue stopping. You don't want to make a habit of stopping. So Janice, I can appreciate that you, uh, what you've gone through. Um, but knowing, you know, when you gain that awareness that, you know, you know, you need to come back and do it. Um, there's a reason for that. Um, so we want to, you know, you may have plateaued a little bit, you may have regressed a little bit, but we want to keep on moving forward. So I appreciate the fact that you're back and I appreciate the fact you're being honest with us and you shared it with us. Thank you. All right. So on to specifically review in define my day. Here is the page that ends every day in define my day. So when you open up your book to day one, day two, whatever, on the right side, you see your priority page, which we talked about last week. Flip it over, and this is the review page. How I, th there's not a whole lot of prompting on this page, right? It just says journal. Basically, I want you to write down what's on your mind. A lot of people say, I don't know what to write. I don't know what my purpose for this is. I, I don't want to do this. At the end of the day, I don't want to. That's sort of the indication that you should, right? Not wanting to do something. It's it, this, this journaling, like anybody that talks about journaling knows that it's good for you. So just go under the assumption that it's good for you and helpful. If you do that, then it's just a matter of doing it, right? And you gain the benefit. And this is one of those things where I say, just do it. Don't worry about so much what you're writing. As you gain momentum, you will understand what you need to be writing. Now, some helpful ways to get started. Uh, what I do to help me get moving with it is to uh, write down how I did with my priorities. You know, did I, did I progress well? What was hard? What was easy? Did I schedule enough for myself? Did I schedule too much? Um, you know, a feeling I had. Maybe there's a specific situation that I need to get on paper to explore it. As you're writing something down, your brain is sort of reliving it and it it understands it better. It sort of becomes more solidified as you're writing it down. And you'll find that you, as you get into this, you'll gain some perspective on situations that you may not have as it's kind of swirling around your head. So, um, you know, this is free because I don't want to direct you in a way that you shouldn't go. I want you to explore yourself to gain awareness on what you did in the day and what's, what kind of is floating to the top of your mind. Don't skip this. It's the easiest part of this process to skip. Don't skip it. Tomorrow I will improve. This is identifying the fact that we can continue to take steps of growth. This is not meant as an indictment, all right? I've had people in the past say, you know, what if there's nothing that I can, could have done better? Uh, that's sort of a, like a, I don't like that question or that statement because it's kind of a give up statement. It's kind of like saying that like, you know, I did all I could. That's almost never true. Like there's always something more that we can do to grow. I want you to have that growth mindset that, you know, no matter what I did today, there's room to improve tomorrow. And it doesn't mean that you did things bad today. It just means that today was a building block and tomorrow you can improve. So don't look at it as a, 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 a statement that's um, you know, like some sort of like, like it's persecuting you for, for not doing your best. That's not the case. The, the, the goal of that statement is to say like, whether I did good or bad today, I can't improve, right? It's a growth statement. I want you to continue to look towards growth. Now, I am most, or I am looking forward to tomorrow. This is why the a way to kind of set some anticipation for tomorrow. So that, like when you put your head down, I want you to end with a good thought. I'm looking forward to, you know, it could be something as simple as a sunny day. It could be a project that you're going to finish. It could be a good conversation. It could be the end of the day. Maybe you're enjoying a glass of wine by the fire, maybe a good TV show whatever it is, right? I want you to set some positive anticipation for the next day. This page 
can be fast. You can jot things down quickly. You can take some time with it. It all depends on what you need from it. But keep in mind the goal of this page is to grow your self-awareness, to grow your awareness of the progress you have made and the potential progress you can make coming up. This is where like real understanding of where we spend our time and where we are putting our attention impacts us. Um, now, uh, let's see, let's get into the weekly. This one, this, this page appears at the end of every week. This is meant to be quick, right? We've already, we already have to review our day. This just kind of takes us back to look at like a quick view of what happened over the past week. You know, was I able to follow my ideal day? And you can rate yourself based on your own judgment, right? I, I follow my ideal day all week. I'm giving myself a five out of five. You know, I'll tell you what, my, my this this page for me from yesterday, I gave myself a two because I did not follow my ideal day through the holidays. It's a rough time through the holidays. There's a lot of distractions. I didn't follow my ideal day. So I gave myself a two. Uh, I reached my milestones. Uh, again, you're, you're rating, like you have up to five milestones each week. You're rating how you did. If you only had one milestone and you, and you accomplished it, give yourself a five out of five. I was able to avoid distractions. Again, you're kind of just basing this on, on your, your own, you know, judgment here. Uh, I accomplished, uh, priorities before my to-do list items. This is helping us identify whether we are actually following the define my day process. You have to, if you're going to make progress in life, do the things that you identify as priorities for yourself. You have to do priorities before your to-do list items. You cannot fill your day with things that don't matter and expect to make progress. You have to do your priorities before to-dos. And then I accomplish my daily disciplines. This is a, a point of health. This is the daily disciplines are those habits, those things we want to ingrain into our being so we have a good foundation to accomplish what we want. Uh, and again, you know, you look at that page and if it's all check marks, give yourself a five out of five. If you're 50, 50 with it, maybe you only give yourself a two or a three. And then my biggest area of improvement, you know, looking quickly at these, you know, where your fives and twos and threes are, you know, where can you improve? You know, what's the best thing you can do for yourself? You know, maybe, you know, you need to be more healthy, physically healthy. Maybe you need to get more rest. Like it can be something small, can be something big. It's just up to you. And then the last one is a little bit more in depth. And by the end of a book, a lot of people, you know, you're getting tired. You're getting like, you know, like you're looking for a fresh start the same way we are with a year, right? At the end of December, we're kind of worn out. We're not paying attention to what we need to. And then January 1st, we're trying to like run back into it. That happens here too. We finished four weeks and we're kind of like backing off and then we're like, we want to like charge ahead again with another book. I want you to finish this out. And I, I would make this a point of mindfulness to finish this out. And so, um, come on to the screen here. And so what I would do here is, um, you know, follow these, you know, again, you're quickly rating yourself how I met my personal goals. And this forces you to look back to that monthly page, right? Maybe you didn't even look at it the entire time. Hopefully you looked at it at least once a week when you were setting up your weekly milestones. Um, and you go back and rate yourself as far as how you did here. I completed, I completed the following books or education, um, one unexpected benefit. This, these are all designed to kind of help you think and get those creative juices going and make you really explore the progress that you may have or may not have made this month and then how we can improve it going forward. Uh, you know, I was able, I was able or not able to accomplish my goals to increase my effectiveness. I will. I feel, again, a very open statement. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel defeated. That's an okay statement. All right. And then kind of explore why I feel defeated because, or I feel accomplished because, you know, this got in my way, you know, something consistently pulling me away from my priorities was, you know, like, is it just me distracting myself? Is it somebody around me that just distracting me? Um, you know, what, what's going on? And so these are all things to help you gain awareness for, um, you know, what, what is going on in life. And so when we get into the purpose of the review, like, why do we do this? Why do we do this? Number one is to gain awareness. 
gain awareness of where we spend our time, where we put our attention and the results we're getting. It's taking ownership of those results and understanding how our behavior impacts where we're going in life. And so if you imagine yourself on that path, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're walking to Florida, right? You're, 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 this is a long trip. We're, we're taking a, a long walk from wherever you are to Florida. If you live in Florida, good, you're lucky. Uh, but so, you know, we, we know we have to plan out our day, right? We have to plan out, you know, where we're going to stop for meals, go to the bathroom, uh, you know, where we're going to rest. You know, maybe we want to sightsee a little bit, you know, which would be our relaxation. But at the end of the day, you know, this is our look back and see the progress we made. This is the see where we may have stumbled, see where we may have had a little more hardship than we thought we would see, you know, where we had some wind at our backs and maybe didn't anticipate it and be appreciative of that. So we're, we're gaining awareness of the progress that we made. You know, uh, did I accomplish what I wanted to? Why or why not? That's a, that's a, that's a big question. You know, I, I said this was a priority. I didn't do it. Why not? You know, is it that it was too big for one day? Is it that I wasn't prepared for it? Or is it that it really wasn't a priority and why not? You know, it's not a priority because it's somebody else's priority, but it's not really authentic to me. It's not a priority because I, I, I really, you know, while I feel like it should be, it, I'm not quite ready for it yet. Or whatever it is, like there's no wrong answer. The, the goal is to explore why. Maybe it's that you know, we have a habit of not addressing important things. Maybe we have an aversion to it for some reason. And we just need to break that habit. We need to just do it. You know, some things are habitual. Some things are meaningful. You know, like there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of stuff going on in life and we don't quite understand it. We can get caught up in stagnation in the same way we can get caught up in overachieving. And you overachieve yourself so far that you're in the wrong direction and you, re- you don't realize it until it's too late. We don't want you to regret where you spend your time, whether it's stagnation or overachievement or whatever. We want you to do the things that you, like at the end of life, you do the ultimate review and you look back and you say, I like where I spent my time. It wasn't all perfect. It wasn't all great. I made a lot of mistakes. But I did what I should have done for myself and for the people around me. That's the mentality I want you to have, that a sense of satisfaction instead of a sense of regret. You know, Part of this and in, in going back and looking at this is, uh, you know, assessing those feelings uh, and then making the adjustments, identifying the adjustments that need to happen. Um, you know, we're, we're hold on, making sure I'm not getting ahead of myself here. But yeah, so we talk about checking the path, um, you know, making sure we're on the right path. Um, but, you know, making the adjustments, identifying our feelings. Um, in, in the end, I think a lot of this can be um, you know, you look at this and you can identify how much progress you made. Uh, we don't understand a lot of times. We, we can identify big changes, you know. Um, it's kind of the boiling frog analogy. You know, you put a, a frog in a pot of boiling water and he jumps out because he notices that immediate temperature change. But if you put him in a bottle of, or a pot of uh, room temperature water and then slow, slowly raise it to a boil, he doesn't notice and he gets boiled alive. It's terrible. It's a terrible thing to happen, but um, but it kind of works that way with us, is that we notice big changes. So sometimes, and a lot of people do this, where they let things get bad, like you let your house get really dirty, and then you make a big clean, and it looks great, and you're like, whoa, but it was a lot of work, and it was exhausting, and meanwhile, the dirty house was really draining you, um, whereas if you maintain it, you're consistently getting a nicer and nicer, um, cleaner and cleaner house over time. And you end up with a better result, but it's not like so stark. It's not so like crazily different. So, and you become addicted to that, like crazy different change that's going on right now with new years. Right. So we, you know, we, we, we see these immediate changes and we want immediate changes and they're sexy and they're, you know, it's like a, it's like almost like a, kind of like a movie, you know, like where you like, there's a problem and it's fixed within two hours. That's not really how life works. And the healthiest among us, take consistent steps forward. And so when we're in this small, consistent steps forward, 
you know, those those big results come, uh, but it it takes a while, right? And so it, it's hard to really assess how far we made it. And by having this journal of our progress, by making this review every day, we can look back and, and see our thoughts from a year ago and say, wow, like I, I I, I think a lot changed. You know, you ever look at photos, you know, they pop up on your phone or on your Facebook feed or whatever. And you look at old photos and you go, wow, a lot's changed since then. You know, maybe you got older, maybe you gained weight, lost weight, you know, different people in the photos, you know, or, you know, maybe you live in a different house, like whatever it might be, a lot changes and we just sort of miss it. But when you write your journaling, you know, when you write in your journal and you look back, a year ago and see where you were, the change can be amazing, especially when it comes to thought processes. You know, when, you, when you're when you looking at your way of thinking, which is kind of murky sometimes, and you look at these thoughts, you're like, wow, I can't believe that was a problem back then, or I can't believe I was focused on that, or I can't believe, you know, you know, there's, there's a lot going on there. And, you know, for me, I mean, years ago, when I would look at, when, when Define My Day was on a piece of paper and I was just like, I, I like I, there was one time like they all fell off the wall and they fell on the floor and I had to reorganize them because I used to put them in a, at a manila envelope, like taped to the wall and I would put them in there at the end of the day and they all fell on the floor and went everywhere and I was putting them together and I was reading some of the, the things I was writing about and um, it was amazing. I mean, it was just amazing to see how far I'd made it just in a couple of months. And uh, I bet you if I go back and look at those sheets, I don't even know where they are now. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a completely different person. And I know when I go back and look at my progress and define my day now, uh, I, I am making progress. 2020 is a little weird. 2020, I'm sure in some ways I didn't make progress. But I think once we're through everything we're going through, I think a lot of growth will happen through this too. Kind of like the, the fish getting beat up for a while, but eventually comes out of it in, in, in pretty good shape and maybe in better shape. Um, what I want you to keep focused on as you're going through these reviews is the it's more important to do them than it is to spend a ton of time on them. The whole, the whole define my day process is not meant to take time. I don't want this to be a time consuming project for you. I created this to be quick. I wanted to be in and out within a couple of minutes every day and then have touch points throughout the day where I look at it and go, oh, yeah, this is what I'm focusing on. Or remind me that this is what I told myself my mindset would be. Same goes for the journaling and review. I want you to be as quick as necessary. You might find some days you need to spend more time exploring a thought. You may find that other days you just, you know, you're tired, you want to go to bed and you just want to jot something down real quick. Either or is fine. As long as it's taking you to the result you want. If you're not exploring it properly, if you're not like properly is subjective, but if you're not exploring it to the extent that you really need it to be explored, then you're not going to get the results you want. So that's part, you know, it's, it's very much the same as the rest of this. You need to put into it what needs to be put into it. And if you don't like the results you're getting, then maybe we need to adjust how much time we're putting into it. All right, quick summary, and then we'll get into the comments. All right, so the times we review, we review three times in Define My Day, daily, weekly, and at the end of each book. Uh, the dailies are a little bit more intensive. The weekly is meant to be quick because you've already reviewed your day, hopefully. And then the monthly is like that one that's going to walk you through all of the things that happened to you over the month. The purpose of review. Mark your progress. Gain awareness of your thoughts, feelings, progress, you know, things that are pulling you back, things that are helping you move forward. Making adjustments based on all of that. Maybe we need to adjust when we do our priorities. Maybe we need to adjust what we're focusing on. Maybe we need to adjust our mindset and our attitude. It's all you know, things that we learn as we're growing that awareness. And then the last one is to make a record of your journey. 
so that maybe a year from now you look back and say, wow, I made some progress. You can even do it from one book to the next. I guarantee you're going to find progress in there that you did not readily think about. Now, the mindset that I want us all to have, you know, as we talk, as we move forward here, is that keep that river of well-being in mind. I want you to think about, you know, not overworking yourself, not overdoing it. Give yourself some breaks, but don't give yourself such a break that it's damaging. The results are what matter. And the results come in time based on what we're doing now. So if you say, this is my 28-day goal, this is my four-week goal, and you've mapped out the steps that you need to take to get there, as you're going through those steps, this review process will help you identify whether you tried to do too much, didn't do enough, uh, you keep getting pulled up and distracted by something, you know, maybe this isn't authentic to where you want to go and, and you'll figure that out along the way too. But I don't want you to be overwhelmed with it. There's a, there's a trend going on right now where they're saying, you know, this is a, a no resolution year. We're not going to make resolutions because we don't need to change. We need to grow. And I like that. We don't need to change ourselves. We need to grow into who we are supposed to be. So don't make drastic resolutions. Take the steps, the small steps that you need to take to move forward in a healthy way. All right, let's hit the comments. Um, and uh, we'll get into some other stuff going on here. Uh, and I also, I, we didn't do it earlier, but I want to get into, I want to read the do one thing every day that centers you. Or should we do an inspires you today? Let's do an inspires today. Do one thing that inspires you. We're going to do this. All right. But first, I'm going to get into the comments. Terry says, journal. It's where I scream at myself for not staying on task. <laughs> I can appreciate that, Terry. You know, and it's that awareness. And sometimes we have to yell at ourselves a little bit, right? It's not, not necessarily bad. You know, and that will help you the next day. You know, if you're reviewing it, and you if you write the same thing every day, you know, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't stay on task. It's going to grow your awareness. Some people it might take a couple of days. Other people, you might have to write that same thing for a month. But eventually, you're going to get tired of writing it. And you're going to say, why am I continuing to do this to myself? And you have to explore that answer. Whatever the answer is, you have to keep, you have to explore it. It doesn't hurt you to explore. It can only help. Debbie says, sometimes my journaling is only a sentence or two, and then sometimes it's like I'm writing a novel. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. Um, I must have overplayed my days because I use some threes a lot. Yeah, I've done the same thing. I've done the same thing. Twos and threes, yep. Yeah. Helen, good. I'm glad it was helpful. Thank you. Uh, just ordered for me and my husband. Can't wait to get started. Awesome, Kelly. Thank you. Uh, what is the best way to get started? So uh, we have, uh, I would say the first thing you should do to get started is in your email, you'll have an invite to the user group. I would jump into there. Uh, you'll find the quick walkthrough of Define My Day. Quick is relative term, I guess, because some people say it's too long. I think it's appropriate. Uh, but, you know, you'll find the walkthrough, the video walkthrough of Define My Day. You can also ask questions of people in there. Uh, subscribe to this uh, Facebook page and get notifications when we do our videos. We do them normally every Monday at 10 a.m. where we talk about a topic and uh, work through this. But I think the user group is probably the most important thing that we do aside from the book itself. Uh, Debbie, my resolution is to be authentic and find my inspiration to find... J-I-Y. I'm guessing that's supposed to be joy. I think that's a typo to find joy. I, I, I agree. Yep. Oh, I see it. Yep. Um, so you resolve to be authentic and find my inspiration to find joy. Yeah. So I like that resolution because it's not changing you. That's just making a, a uh, commitment to find what's important to you. I like that. If we're going to talk about resolutions, 
I do like that one. Good for you, Debbie. All right, let's get into, uh, let's find some, uh, find what inspires us. All right, so this is Lewis Carroll, and the uh, quote is, Soup of the evening, beautiful soup. I have no idea. Uh, so the prompt here is create a beautiful soup from ingredients in your kitchen. List them here. Okay. All right. I, I you know, that's, um, I guess not what I was expecting, but hey, you know, let's try one more. Let's go to the next page. I was 32 when I started cooking. Up until then, I just ate. And that was Julia Child. And uh, this prompt is, there's two prompts actually on this page. Name a food you used to just eat and describe how you now cook with it. So it's interesting. I guess it's teaching you to appreciate, you know, what we're putting in our bodies. I, I can I can appreciate that. But this, the, I guess that's the point of these books, right? Is to help you like get creative and kind of, figure things out so you know if that's the purpose of the books doing a good job there because i certainly wouldn't have uh beautiful souped my way through life today <laughs> um debbie so what set of books am i reading from you can find these on the website uh these are um little journals that we sell that like kind of help you just you know it, it's they're fun they're funny because i um I, I was walking through a store one day and I saw them and I picked one up and I thought, well, this is genius. I, I opened this one. This is actually the, the one that I saw. And, um, and it's just, it makes you think, right? It just like a lot of times we get so caught up in the world around us and even our own thoughts. And even with Define My Day, like you can get maybe too caught up with something. And so this one kind of helps you pick your head up and gain some perspective. Um, so like this one in the Do One Thing That Centers You journal, each morning sees some tasks begin. Each evening sees it close. Something attempted, something done, has earned a night's repose. And that's Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And uh, well, this is appropriate for what we're talking about today. The prompt is, what I did today to earn a night's repose. So it kind of just, you know, what today did I accomplish? Uh, so that's the do one thing that centers you. We have uh, the do one thing every day that inspires you. And there's a couple more on the website also, if you want to check those out. Helen, change is my word of the year as I need to make changes to progress, to progress forward. Good, good. Good for you. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think that is about it. I want to remind everybody, um, we have uh, a couple of... Uh, bundles on sale if you haven't purchased to find my day if you need to reload check out the bundles we also on january 16th saturday uh, we're doing a define my day with nick it's part of a a larger package that we're doing for one month we're going to start strong in january from january through uh, the middle of february and we're going to do it kicks off with define my day with nick on january 16th and we are going to go through the entire book we're going to we're going to set up the entire book from our affirmations all the way through to our milestones and getting ready for day one, whenever your day one might be. For me, it's always a Monday. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to do a Zoom call where we spend time with the group doing that. And then we're going to check in once every week for four weeks uh, to go through our progress that we've had uh, over this time. And we're also going to do a one-on-one -on -one call, uh, me with you, to go over any questions that you might have about Define My Day, the process, and, and, and what you have going on in your Define My Day planner. So all of that is available on the website. It's under the coaching tab uh, on uh, the, the Define My Day um, store. So check that out if you're interested. I think that, uh, I think it's, I think it's going to really be big for a lot of people. And we're only looking for really a couple people. I want this group to be fairly small, uh, maybe half a dozen to a dozen people. So uh, get into it uh, before we shut it down because it's going to be going on in two weeks. Uh, Karen says, I love the Do One Thing That Inspires You journal. I'm naturally a creative person, but sometimes get so involved in my science -y job that I forget to tap into that part of my brain. Yeah, absolutely. Debbie, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, one last announcement or one last thing. I want to remind everybody that uh, we do have the... Um, 
the uh, black flag, the veterans uh, define my day journal. This one is not on sale uh, because we want to try to donate as much money to the veterans leadership program as possible. So uh, these have actually been selling pretty well over this past couple of weeks. Uh, so I appreciate everybody that's already purchased one. If you haven't purchased one, please do. Uh, the money benefits the veterans leadership program, which helps empower veterans as they transition from military life to civilian life. So I appreciate that. Um, all right, guys, it's um, it's a new year, right? And uh, like Sandy says, great start for a new year. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate your time being with me, that you spend your morning with me here on a Monday. Uh, if you need the replay, please check it out on YouTube uh, or in the Defining Life podcast with Nick Boris. Um, please share this with other people if you feel that it was valuable. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Keep moving forward, and I will see you very soon.